Well, thank you very much, everybody. I'll be leaving for Minnesota today. We have two stops, one a very big one, and it'll be a lot of fun. I know a lot of you are going with us, so that'll be interesting. We're meeting right now on immigration, and uh, we are very strong at the border. We're very strong on security. We want security for our country. The Republicans want security and insist on security for our country, and we will have that at the same time, we have compassion. We want to keep families together. It's very important. I'll be signing something in a little while that's going to do that. And the people in this room want to do that. And they're working on various pieces of legislation to get it done. But I'll be doing something that's somewhat preemptive, but ultimately will be matched by <clears throat> legislation, I'm sure. Uh, we're having a lot of problems with Democrats. They don't want to vote for anything. They don't care about lack of security. They really would like to have open borders where anybody in the world can just flow in, including from the Middle East, from anybody, anywhere. They can just flow into our country. Tremendous problems with that. Tremendous crime caused by that. We're just not going to do it. I do want to say that because we're all so busy, and I just mentioned to the congressmen and the senators in the room that we are going to cancel and postpone tomorrow's congressional picnic. We have a congressional picnic tomorrow, and I was just walking over to the Oval Office, and I said, you know, it doesn't feel right to have a picnic for Congress when we're working on so doing something very important. We have many things that are important. We're talking about trade. We're talking about many, many things. But it didn't feel exactly right to me. So we will be officially postponing the congressional picnic for tomorrow. We'll make it another time when things are going extremely well. And they are going for the country extremely well. We have record-setting numbers in every way economically, but we want to solve this immigration problem, which is going on for 40 years, more. It's been going on forever. And we want to see if we can solve it. So we are canceling or postponing the congressional <laughs> picnic tomorrow. Would anybody in the room have any question or statement that you'd like to make while the press is here? Anybody? Anybody? I'll say one, Mr. President, yes. you know, on the issue of immigration, trade, and investment, these are all areas where Congress has a lot of authority under the Constitution, and you have authority, the executive branch has authority uh, under the Constitution. I think that's why meetings like this are really important, bringing the leadership on both sides together because they're important issues. So appreciate the opportunity to let you, you uh, see our views, uh, hear our views on these issues where we uh, share authority on important matters. Thank you. And we all very much have the same views. We want to keep family together. At the same time, we have to be strong on the border. Otherwise, you'll have millions of people coming up, not thousands like we have now. You'll have millions of people flowing up and just overtaking the country. We're not letting that happen. So we have to be very strong on the border. But at the same time, we want to be very compassionate. Uh, yes, Lamar. Mr. President, thanks for having us. I, I, I think what Dan said was, was good. We, we, we really have, on the issues on trade, on immigration, we have a partnership under the Constitution. We have some authority. The President has some authority. We need to work together. I was thinking this morning, when, when we look at President Nixon's portrait in the White House, we think that he, he did the unexpected and he went to China because he could do that. He was in a position to do it. And, we, and President Reagan did the unexpected. He went to, went to the Berlin Wall in Moscow. And when we were here a year ago, I think I suggested to you that immigration, which has bedeviled us for 40 years, as you've said, I believe you can, you're the president who can help us solve the immigration problem with your leadership. You may be able to do for immigration what Nixon did for China and Reagan did for the Soviet Union. And a lot of us would like to work with you on that. Yeah, thank you, Lamar, very much. Yeah, we need the Democrats' support because we need their votes. It's very simple. You know, people say we have a majority. Well, we have a one majority in the Senate. We need 60. Unfortunately, we don't go with the majority. We go with 60. Someday somebody will explain why, but that's the way it is. We have — we need 60 votes. We have 51 votes at the most. So we need Democrat votes in order to do it. Otherwise, you can't do it. Tom, you were going to say something? Tom, well, I think it's, it's very important that we protect our border. We cannot allow a child to be a get-out-of-jail-free card and a get-into-the-U.S.-free ticket. Uh, but at the same time, as you said, as we've all said, we'd like to keep families together, keep them together at the border for the orderly and timely processing 
of the adult's immigration claim. If it's a lawful, legitimate claim, we can admit the family into the country. If not, they'll have to go back to their home country. I'm glad you're looking for a solution for that. I know that we in Congress are working on legislation that will allow our hardworking Border Patrol agents to keep families together at the border while we process their claims in a timely fashion. You're right. And you bring up something that I have to say. Our Border Patrol agents and our ICE agents have done one great job. ICE is throwing, we're throwing by the thousands, MS-13, they come into the country. We're liberating towns on Long Island and other places. We're throwing them out by the thousands, but we need laws that don't allow them to come back in. Mac, you've been very involved in this issue. Do you have anything to say? Well, Mr. President, there are a number of issues that uh, we're going to be able to discuss today that touch on our country's national security. And, and certainly, national controlling who and what comes across our border is an element of national security as we uh, do the compassionate thing with families. And I uh, look forward to working with you to further strengthen our military. Together, we have turned around a declining situation, but uh, that's also part of what we need to do together. Back to Lamar's point about we both have responsibilities. We can do more together. I will say with all of the numbers that you see, uh, if we weren't strong on the border, you'd have hundreds of thousands of people pouring through the border. They'd just be pouring through, and uh, the country would not be the country anymore. Lindsay? We've got a big, massive mess that's been going on for decades, and we're all going to fix it one day, I hope. But we've got a specific problem that puts the country in a dilemma. Here's your dilemma. It's President Obama's dilemma. Our dilemma. If, he, if a family shows up at the border, and we let the family go into the country and say, please come back for your hearing, about 80% of the time, the adults never show up for the hearing. I think most Americans feel like that is bad. It will create a third wave of illegal immigration. I want to be fair to the people who came here under the old system, but I don't want to create incentives to create a third wave. The other choice is, is if you detain the parents who broke the law under the Flores decision, you have to break the family up. So there's a 1997 Supreme Court, court case that we've got to deal with. So I would urge my Democratic friends to see if we can find a way to keep families together, have a legislative fix to the Flores decision, and argue about the other things later. Because right now, Mr. President, you're in a, you're in a real bind. If you detain the adults, the, the law requires the children to be separated. If you let the adults into the country, they never show up. Seems to me that we want to keep the family together and have the parents show up for their day in court. To Senator Schumer, I know we'd, there's a lot we don't agree on, but surely to goodness we can fix this court decision because the country's in a bad spot, not just you. Well, Lindsay, the, the dilemma is that if you're weak, if you're weak, which some people would like you to be, if you're really, really pathetically weak, the country is going to be overrun with millions of people. And if you're strong, then you don't have any heart. That's a tough dilemma. Perhaps I'd rather be strong, but that's a tough dilemma. Yes, go ahead, Ron. In, in our community, Homeland Security, we've held 30 hearings on border security. And you know how much I like data. And, you know, Senator Graham mentioned the fact that we, we have these incentives. There's nothing compassionate, by the way, of enticing people to take a very dangerous journey on a train they call a beast or, you know, through the desert. We, we've seen the pictures of, of dead, des desiccated bodies in the desert. There's nothing compassionate about that. But, but here's what's happened since 2012, since DACA. Just to talk about unaccompanied children. Uh, prior to that, we somewhere between three or 4,000 unaccompanied children from Central America came in, into this country. Then DACA was instituted in 2012, and that problem skyrocketed. The numbers on it, about 225,000 uncomfortable children just from Central America, about almost half a million family members. So we've got another 750,000 individuals, very sympathetic, that we're just incentivizing for coming. And we have to stop. We have to stop those incentives. Our goal of our policy should be to reduce the flow of people incentivized coming to this country. And that's what strong enforcement actually does. So just so everybody knows, this deal was just about done. We had a deal signed. President Obama signed DACA. When he signed it, he said, I'm really not allowed to sign this, and I'm going to sign it anyway. But he actually said, I'm not allowed to sign this. It's never going to hold up. And they got a judge 
who held it up, and they got another one who held it up. Then we had a couple that turned it down, and it's going to be a Supreme Court issue. But before it was held up, everyone assumed that the DACA would not be held up, and we had a deal with the Democrats. It was a deal that everybody agreed to. It was $25 billion. We we're going to build a wall. We would take care of many, many different things, including loopholes. It was all done, except when this judge ruled in favor of DACA, meaning that it could continue until we get to the Supreme Court, all of a sudden, they weren't there anymore. And that's what happened. And that's why we're in this mess, because we had a couple of court decisions which is going to force an issue to the Supreme Court that shouldn't be forced to the Supreme Court. Uh, Mr. President, yes, me, John. Um, thanks for inviting us up on these important issues and, and for having this important discussion, certainly on immigration, but also on trade. And the context that I want to uh, make sure we talk about is we've made incredible progress on tax relief. We made tremendous progress on regulatory relief, and it's reflected in our economy. Now, if we can do the same thing on trade, think what that means for our country in terms of economic growth, in terms of jobs, in terms of getting wages moving higher, and the impact that has for all Americans. So we have to look at it in that context. When we talk about trade, it's on top of tax relief and regulatory relief. And now, with the, if we can get the, the right policies in place on trade, think what that means for our country. Well, we're doing very well on trade, I will say. We've been uh, really hurt as a country on trade for many years. Despite bad trade deals, we're doing very well. Now we're making very good trade deals. Well, you'll be seeing that. Uh, they'll be announced pretty rapidly. We already have a couple that are made. But we're making great trade deals. Uh, and, and honestly, we need people coming into our country. You know, we have a lot of companies coming into our country. Chrysler just announced. We have uh, Foxconn is going up to Wisconsin, as you know, and a great company that make uh, the Apple iPhones and uh, laptops and an unbelievable company. We need people. We need people that work for these companies because they're coming in at a number that nobody ever thought possible. So we want people to come into our country, but we I think I can speak for everybody at the table. We want them to come in based on merit. We want great people that will be great for our country. And we want them to come in based on merit. We're going to need those people because we have so many companies coming to the country. John, you're going to say something? Mr. President, to your point, uh, America is the most generous country in the world when it comes to legal immigration. And I think we ought to draw a very clear line between legal immigration that benefits our country That's right. Absolutely. and illegal immigration, which is a threat to public safety. I just wanted to make the one point. I agree with what uh, Tom Cotton and others have said, what you've said about being able to enforce the law and keep families together. It's not a mutually exclusive choice. We can do both, and I'm confident we will achieve that goal. But I, I just want to point out that uh, coming from a border state like Mac and I do, uh, the border the illegality along the border is, uh, is a complex problem because it is, True. as somebody pointed out, it's commodity agnostic. In other words, they said it's people, it's drugs, it's weapons. And you talk about an opioid crisis in the United States, it's not just prescription drugs, it's heroin that comes from Mexico. Right. So this is a very complex situation. We need law and order along the border. Everybody agrees with that. We need to be compassionate the way we handle these families. But it's important to remember that larger context because the cartels and the criminal organizations that benefit from this, they, uh, they're just uh, making a lot of money and uh, keeping uh, this uh, situation very dangerous for everybody involved. And John, in many ways, they're using the children, in all ways, they're Absolutely. using the children as a ticket Absolutely. to getting into the country. And we have to remember that. You know, uh, there's a number of the 12,000 children, 2,000 are with the parents, and 10,000 came up with uh, some really horrible people in some cases. You have the coyotes, you have the, you have the traffickers, the human traffickers. Not only drug traffickers, but you have the human traffickers. And they use these children as passports to get into the country. So we have to work on that, too. It's a very complex issue. It has been going on. You shouldn't feel guilty because it's been going on for many, many years, many, many decades. But we're going to solve that along with a lot of other problems that we've already solved. We're doing well at solving problems. You know, when I became president, we had North Korea. We had the Iran deal, which was no good. We had lots of problems with trade and bad trade deals. There are a lot of things that we solved and we're solving uh, that, in theory, I shouldn't have had to solve.
These are things that should have been solved for a long time, even on trade. We should have never allowed our past leaders, should have never allowed China to get to a point where there's a $500 billion trade deficit with the United States. When they went up, we should have gone up. We should have gone up together. Not where you allowed one to get so far ahead. And that includes the European Union, and it includes many others. Shouldn't have happened. So we came at a time where there were plenty of problems to solve. And one of the big problems is immigration. And I hope that within not too long, you know, a distance and, — and I mean — I mean, beyond this one problem of immigration, you can mention the word comprehensive, or you don't have to use it. A lot of politicians don't like the word comprehensive immigration reform. But I really think we have an opportunity to do the whole — the whole immigration picture. And that's what I'm looking to do, ultimately. But right now, we want to fix this problem, and I think we'll be able to do that. Does anybody else — David, do you want to say something? Well, Mr. President, you know, the last year and a half has shown an absolute turnaround in this economy. I mean, we were faced with eight years of 1.9 percent economic growth. We focused on, as John said, uh, regulation, energy, taxes. This year, we put a Dodd-Frank bill, a bipartisan bill, and we freed up a couple trillion dollars. So what this administration has done is freed up six trillion dollars to go back in the economy. This is real jobs, three and a half million new jobs, 870 regulations of birth. This economy is moving. The rest of the world is paying attention. NATO has doubled their investment in terms of their military spending. We have a new free trade agreement with Korea. We're heading in the right direction. I just hope that we can uh, focus on the priorities right now within this trade equation to get equal access. It's not right, right when Alibaba can do uh, cloud computing in the U.S. and Google can do cloud computing in China. And that's what this is all about. We've reduced global poverty by two-thirds in the last 40 years, uh, while poverty in the United States has remained flat. That's not right. And this is moving to change that. Yes. Jim? Uh, I appreciate the fact that you call attention to what's really happening now with the, with the economy due to two things, the tax bill and the regulation. You know, we're killing people with regulations. But what hasn't been said around this table, and I'm surprised, the biggest accomplishment from your administration is what you've done with the military. You know, we, you succeeded a president who had a policy that said you can't do anything with sequestration with the military unless you do it with the non-defense. And we changed it. We had to vote for a lousy uh, budget bill to do it, but uh, nonetheless, it is changed. We've broken parity, and we're now rebuilding our military. That's true. Well, the military is really incredible. Uh, we're ordering new planes, new ships, all jobs, too. You know, jobs, I would say, in this case, is a far second. But we are going to have a military like we've never had before, and it's great. $700 billion approved and 716. And in that budget, $6 billion for opioid. That's an important thing, too. So uh, a lot of progress is being made. Mike, did you have something to say? Mike right. Pence? Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. And I, I just — I know I speak for the President when I express the gratitude of this administration for the support of the members of the Senate and the House that are gathered around here. You've delivered for the American people on national security, rebuilding our military, on tax cuts and regulatory reform, restoring our economy. But what the President reiterated again yesterday, and he has said every day from when he sought this office, is we have a crisis of illegal immigration. And as the President made clear, we don't want families to be separated. We don't want children taken away from parents. But right now, under the law, and we sit with these lawmakers, we only have two choices before us. Number one is don't prosecute people right. who come into our country illegally, or prosecute them, and then under court cases and the law, they have to be separated from their children. What I want to be clear about is we're calling on these lawmakers, Mr. President, not just to solve this problem in a way that affirms our commitment to law and order, and compassion, which we can do. And there are proposals in the Senate, proposals in the House to do that. But the President's vision, articulated in his State of the Union address, was let's, let's solve the, the whole problem. Let's, let's build a wall. Let's close the loopholes. Let's solve the problem for 1.8 million people that were brought into this country through no fault of their home. And let's deal with, with law and order and compassion with this issue of, of family separation at our borders. And, and I, I would say with great respect to the members of Congress, as the House considers legislation tomorrow, the Senate's considering legislation, uh, the President has postponed the congressional picnic, we're, we're calling on Congress to act. Let's roll our sleeves up, let's work the whole problem, let's end this crisis of illegal immigration.
Thank you very much. Does anybody else have anything to say? Because I think we're pretty much on. Yes. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. And just from the House perspective, I want to say, uh, Anna is a still currently serving Guard member. You're my Commander in Chief. Uh, there has been a, a market difference in the security and, the, uh, and the, the good feelings in the military. They understand that we're investing in them again, even though we're asking them to do a lot. Uh, and secondly, security plays a big role. So that includes border security and the bill that we're going to bring up and hopefully pass in the House this week fully funds the border and takes care of all these issues. And I hope the House can pass it. And I wish Democrats would join us because, frankly, it's a lot of stuff in there that they like, too. It's an 80 percent issue. Unfortunately, I think they like the politics of this a little better. Um, and I also want to say uh, we really wish you didn't take Secretary Pompeo from the House because he did a great job. <laughs> He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. He is doing a great job. Thank you, Adam, very much. Appreciate it. Uh, anybody over here? Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to echo uh, particularly what Chairman Thornberry and Senator Inhofe said in terms of uh, the change that we've seen, and Adam as well, the change we've seen in terms of resources for the military. Uh, we got to make sure we don't have another CR for the military. Right. And um, we are working hard in the House. We're hopeful we're going to pass a defense appropriations bill uh, next week in the House. And uh, we need to make sure that that gets taken up and passed in the Senate and that we don't give you another omnibus type bill. But that we get a straight Please. defense appropriations nice. bill passed and taken up. And, and that'll be critically important to continue the work you've done to, to rebuild the military. Thank you, Liz. And say hello to your father, please. Thank you. Great guy. You need to tell Adam to shave. <laughs> he looks good. Handsome guy. So thank you all very much. We appreciate it. <laughs> We are. We're looking to keep families together. It's very important. We're going to be signing an executive order. We're going to also count on Congress, obviously, but we are signing an executive order in a little while. We're going to keep families together, but we still have to maintain toughness, or our country will be overrun by people, by crime, by all of the things that we don't stand for, that we don't want. So I'm going to be signing an executive order in a little while before I go to Minnesota. But at the same time, I think you have to understand we're keeping families together, but we have to keep our borders strong. We will be overrun with crime and with people that should not be in our country. Will you accept a standalone bill addressing family separation? Issues. We're going to see what happens. Mr. President, did the images of those young children at the border? Yes, they affect everybody. Those images affect everybody. But I have to say that uh, you have double standards. You have people that want absolute security and safety, and you have people that do look at the children, and then you have people like me, and I think most of the people in this room, that want both. We want the heart, but we also want strong borders, and we want no crime. We don't want crime in this country. We don't want people coming in. We don't want people coming in from the Middle East through our border, using children to get through the lines. We don't want that. We're doing too good a job to allow that to happen. So we're not going to allow that to happen. Thank you very much. What changes will you make? Nothing. This has, been, this has been going on for, when you say what took long, this has been going on for 50 years, longer. This has been going on under President Obama, under President Bush. This has been going on for many, many years. We're going to see if we can solve it. This is not something that happened just now. You look at the images from 2014. I was watching this morning, and they were showing images from 2014. They blow away what we're looking at today. And that was not during this. That was during the Obama administration. I saw images that were horrible. And you know the ones I'm talking about, because I'm sure you all saw them, too. We're going to see if we can solve the immigration problem like we've solved so many other problems. And uh, I think we'll get it done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.